Meet me down at verse 46. Mark chapter 10. Version of the Bible. And it's going to read like this. Help me, Lord Jesus. Y'all pray for me, okay? And they came to Jericho. And as he, that is Jesus, went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, sat at the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. He began to cry out, megaphonos. It's the word where we get our word, megaphone. He began to cry out his cries loudly and says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Watch the interesting portion of verses 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49 says, and Jesus stood still. You might want to mark that for all of the Bible students, all of you that are in leadership, you, you might want to make reference to that in your scripture because I believe, AP, that that's the only place in the scriptures where a phrase like that exists. It's what they call the law of first, further, and final mention. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight and Jesus said unto him this is wonderful to me <laughs> go thy way thy faith have made thee whole and immediately <laughs> you know some stuff that you read in the Bible ought to make you happy it just ought to make you happy just off of reading it Pastor Trina teaches us teaches us that you just can't read the word every word has meaning to it the scripture says and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way say amen for the reading if you'd be so kind enough before you take your seat would you reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand look at your neighbor with a smile and if you don't know who your neighbor is, it's a good time after we done dance with each other to introduce yourselves. Go and tell your neighbor who you are just in case they don't know you. <laughs> Go ahead, it's okay. We don't, do we don't do credit checks at All Nations. It's all right. You can say your government. You can say it. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad you're in church today. The preacher's gonna need your prayers. He's going to need all your amens. Today, EP subject is I'm screaming for a reason. Good God Almighty. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Before you take your seats, would you touch three more people around you and declare to that neighbor around you, say, I'm screaming for a reason, neighbor. Come on, tell three more people, I'm screaming for a reason. I'm screaming for a reason. I ain't just making noise, I'm screaming for a reason. It's a purpose behind this holler. It, I, I ain't just taking up time. There's a reason behind my screaming. I'm working on something with this. Good God Almighty. 
Yes, Lord, let's work a little bit. The grass withers. The flowers that we love fade. <laughs> hey! Hey! Shadio Shadamasia! You ain't gotta wait till later. You can holler right now. Hey! Glory to God. Yes, Lord Jesus. It's what we can to do. Come on, take your seats. We got a little bit ways to go. <laughs> I don't want no smoke. Listen. <laughs> Y'all act like you got something to holler about. Come on, I'm going to give you a moment to holler lately. This mic going to bother me. Biologically, it happens. When the mouth opens and air rushes through the mouth down the esophagus, filling the lung cavity with air, pressing down on the diaphragm, causing hot air to rise back up past the vocal cords and the voice box, leaping from the lips. And as a diver from a board 30 feet above water, we call that sound a scream. And though some of us would argue and contend that we don't hear many screams, the truth of the matter is that's not totally accurate. Everywhere we look, people are screaming. It happens everywhere that we go. It's football season. Screams happen every Sunday, Mondays and Thursdays. Our beloved Howard Bison's, we don't got but it's homecoming season, so it's homecoming weekend, so it's not but a few of all, but they whooped on Delaware State yesterday. During their homecoming game, nobody had to rehearse screaming before, during, or after the game. Nobody had to do that. You could hear, you couldn't hear in the stands if you were there. The band was playing, the cheerleaders were cheering. There were screams of excitement all in the air. Screams happen, say, everywhere. Screams happen in Las Vegas all the time. They have a rumor going around that says what happens in Vegas. Some of y'all been to Vegas, all right. It's supposed to, but it ain't true. It's not true. It's no more true than what happens at the MGM stays at the MGM. Mm, oh my. My family frequents there often and from time to time when we're there, we have to walk past the casino. And every time I walk past Sister Jessica, I hear screams of the people. And I can see what some of you are saying in the way you're looking at me, but I did not. I did not. I didn't. I didn't say I don't. Don't get it confused. I said that this, but for this particular story, I did not. I did not. I did not. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't because most times when we're there, there's a restaurant that we love called Ginger. You've been there too. We love to go there and get the honey fried chicken wings. If you ain't never had it, I'm telling you, trust me, go. And, and, and I mean, just, just get it. But one day we were walking there and then we can't stop there because we generally had the little boy with us. He's not that little no more, but he, he's usually with us. So you gotta act right. But to, you have to walk past the casino to get to Ginger. And one day in my walking, I walked by and I heard the screams of this particular lady. She caught my attention. And all of a sudden I saw that the lady had just lost it. I mean, she plumb lost it. She threw her purse. She got the screaming and twilling around. It looked like, I ain't gonna tell you why I know, but it looked like she was playing on the dollar slot machine. <laughs> so much so she grabbed my attention that I stopped to pay attention to what was going on. And she had screamed for so long that security had to come 
and calm the lady down a little bit. It happens that way. She had become, she had be overcome with gladness and screaming. And I don't know how much money she had won, but what was interesting was that nobody had to prep her. Nobody had to push her. Nobody had to prime her. She just lost it in the scream when her dollar became thousands. She had to scream. It happens at concerts all the time. For those of you who are music lovers, for those of you who can appreciate the wonderful art of music, like the worship team, you can understand that real music is music from the 70s and 80s. All right. All right. Some of y'all too young to realize and appreciate that, but real music comes from the 70s and the 80s. Real music, real music like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Real music. The Whispers, real music. I mean, the Frankie Beverly and Maze. Real, real music. I mean, music like Luther Vandross. Big Luther, not the little Luther, but Big Luther. P people like Patti LaBelle and even Stephanie Mills. I'm talking about real music that had real lyrics that you could understand. And, and I am not one, because I am a balanced individual, I'm not one to just talk about the secular and not talking about the saved. Because there were people who sang like the Canton Spirituals. Oh. The Mighty Clouds of Joy. The Mississippi Mass Choir. The Mississippi Children's Mass Choir. Oh, oh, okay. The Chester Community, the Wilmington Chester Community Singers. I'm talking about real music. And for that genre in that time, you didn't have to guess who they were singing about. I knew you were singing about the Lord. I knew when your robe swayed, you weren't trying to seduce Nobody in the church, you were swaying for the Lord. Real music. Just like y'all screaming right now, ain't none of these people in here. But screaming happens everywhere. My wife and I were blessed a few weeks ago to get concert tickets to one of our favorite artists, Mr. P.J. Morton. Y'all like them too. Y'all like them too. Okay. Um, and from the moment, uh, Elder Levon, from the moment that the band came out on the stage and they started to play the cover music, folks just started hollering. They was just screaming for like two minutes until PJ walked on the stage himself with his fresh rolled up newbie, his wide leg black pants and his side tied kimono that I'm still looking for. If any of y'all know where it is, please Instagram me. There were screams for some two minutes where people just screamed and hollered in excitement for the moment that they were experiencing. And there were once times when there were screams of passion Screams of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving that happened within the hollow walls and halls of the church. <laughs> Follow me. Dr. Earl chronicles in his book, The Dark Symbols and Obscure Signs, the history of the church in our country. And he places, and how he places it here comes from our own African heritage. Dr. Reynolds Ryan Earl said that our ancestors were people who were passionate about calling on the name of the God that they loved. They didn't worship in beautiful cathedrals and churches like we have today with LED screens and Hammond B3 organs. No, ma'am, no, sir. They went out to the woods and they threw sheets over top of trees and they put big steel pots in the middle of them so that they were able to bring the sound back to them so that master and the other uh, plantation owners would not hear them or hear what they were doing. They came, tap your neighbor, they went for a reason to scream. It reminds me of my upbringing in the old church. That old church, the last time that I was able to go home and I stood in my grandmother's pulpit 
and she's been gone now for almost two years, two years she's been with the Lord. I stood in her pulpit and I just looked out on the congregation and I was reminded that church doesn't always feel like this. It hasn't always had a band that was able to play behind anybody at any time. It hasn't always had wonderful vocalists who could sing the songs of Zion. No, that's not how we always grew up. In our church, we didn't always have the air conditioner working. So we had to lift up the windows and the air that came through, if you sat long enough in the service, you could look up in the ceiling and see the dust Dobbins roll across the ceiling by the whistling of the ceiling fan. Back then, women like my grandmother wore hats to church. Some wore big hats, some wore small hats, some were fashionable hats, and some were just wrong fashion statements. Others wore hats just to cover their heads. They were fruit baskets. They had pineapples, bananas, oranges, anything else you wanted to put on top of the hat that would stand still. They would hand out church fans in the old church. The church fan would have a picture of Martin Luther King on the front of it, and if you turned it over, it had a funeral home, the local funeral home, on the back side of it. And if you went to the city church, the fan at the city church had that black family on it that everybody wanted to be a part of. Yes, it was the old church. That church was a moaning type of church. That church had the type of moaning. I often wonder, Mother Green, what happened to the moaning church? That holy, sanctified church. They had a moan, and I know that some of y'all are too young to remember this, but I'm, I'm 42, so I am old enough to remember the old church, but I'm young enough to appreciate where we are now. But there was a time when the saints would come together and they would moan, and that moan, Bishop, I'm sure you and Mother remember, that moan would stop babies from crying. Yeah. That moan, if you walked in at the right time, it, it, it could make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. It was a moan that was rooted yeah. in, in their oppression and pressures of their day. It was rooted in their experience. It was rooted in their day-to-day burdens. I know some of y'all are too young to have ever even heard or if you don't get the opportunities to go down south to your kinfolks church, moaning sound like mm-hmm. you, we had something in our church, my grandmother's church called the moaning bench. You, you would go up front and you would tarry for the Holy Ghost and, and Mother Brew, Mother Brew would sit on the front pew and she would go mm-hmm. Oh, Lord God. And nobody would be in the sanctuary, but mother would be mm, tarrying for the Holy Ghost. It was a moaning church. We, we don't moan anymore. The moans of the church have been substituted with more mainstream, contemporary sound. In the old church, we had deacon boards that sang hymns. They were in charge of the devotional part of service. And they, would, they, they, they had hymns that were called the, 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 the top or the old 100s. They, they would just pull them out of their back pocket. And they, they, they were people there that would come into the devotional service and just start screaming. You didn't have to pump them or prime them. You didn't have to come on, clap your hands, saints. Come on, let's give God the praise, saints. They came to shout. As a young boy, I can remember me and my cousin sitting in the back of my grandmother's church once upon a time, and we would laugh and we would giggle as the saints got ready to shout. You could almost time it perfectly. We would sit back there and just... 10, 9, 8, 7. And by the time they got to the part of the hymn that said, Open wide thy crystal fountain, let the healings water flow. Mother would be, wow! And to lose it, they'd be off to the races. Folks would be running and screaming everywhere. You didn't have to pump the old church. You didn't have to pump them because their relationship was no shade to us. It was just a bit more 
secure. One day, I happened to be at the church on a Saturday um, because back then, you would cook your Sunday dinner on Saturday because it was almost in the Ten Commandments. If you did anything on Sunday, you was for sure going to die and go to hell. But they would pack out the church and they would cook on Saturdays. And one day, I was helping my grandmother in the kitchen, and Mother Green, I asked Mother Brew, one of the old saints, I, I wasn't a little sassy, but I asked questions because that's just who I am. So I asked her, well, why y'all old saints? Why y'all old saints just shout and holler at the same time all the time? Like every Sunday, y'all do it at the same time, right on cue. Is it I, I was like, you know, is it really necessary that y'all just do it? I mean, I was just asking. And mother said something to me that I will never forget. She looked at me and she said, Mike, what difference does it make? They ain't hollering for you. She said, but son, since you did ask, people come to church with burdens on their heart and with sickness in their bodies, with problems that cannot be solved. And every now and then, the only person that they know of that can help them, that can heal them, that can hope them, is the God who sits above them. So sometimes they just got to scream. Come on, I dare you to just open up your mouth and scream a little bit. Can I tell you, can I tell you why I'm preaching this today? I'm preaching this because I believe that during every gathering of the saints, there is one of every five of us that needs the faith of the Lord. And because we're in our faith series, it is important that we understand the power in our screen. There is something that I have to tell you, if it works, like it worked in the scriptures for Bartimaeus, then it has to work for us. Tell your neighbor there's something about my screen. It's not a slave religion as some would suppose, but it is an act of faith and adoration to God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think. If you can scream for a baseball game, if we can scream for the football game, if we can scream at the lotto machine, if we can scream for the concert, why can't we gather together in the house of God and open up our mouths and holler for the Lord like we've never done before? Come on here, mother. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, and it's the gospel according to St. Mark. And if you've never read the gospel of St. Mark, it is a gospel of excitement. In this gospel, which, the, which is the primary synoptic, Jesus portrays himself in one way. He is a symbol of faith. When you read this particular gospel, he's so awesome that a woman who really needs a gynecologist discovers that God can heal you with or without medicine. She's been hemorrhaging for 12 long years, and she decides that she's going to press her way through a crowd and touch the hem of Jesus's garments. To this day, I do not really know how she heard that Jesus was going to be passing through town. Perhaps she read the Jerusalem Journal. Perhaps, perhaps she read the Palestinian Post. I don't know what she read, but somehow she had made up in her mind that she, that if she could touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be made whole. So she presses her way through the crowd. People were all around Jesus, but this one woman who says, I've got to get to him and grab the hem of his talent. And when she grabbed out to it, healing and virtues came from his body. Jesus looked around and said, who touched me? 
And the disciples said something like, Jesus, you've got to be tripping because there are people all around you touching and pulling on you. And Jesus says, no, it's folk around me, but somebody touched me. I like it. I like that. I like that because just because there is a crowd don't mean that everybody there is there for the right reasons. I want you to know that there are some people night here tonight right now in this, in this building that says that I need to touch God. Can I ask a question? Is there anybody in the church, in the church today that needs to be touched by him? Wait, let's look at the text. Jesus turns around and says, who touched me? And the young lady is kneeling down on the ground. And Jesus says, daughter, because of your faith. You've already been made whole. It's the gospel of excitement, I promise you. When Jesus is on his way into St. Mark, he gets to the house of Jairus'. Come on, help me teach the text. Help me teach the book. Jairus' and his daughter has passed away, and they've called for the wailing women and the worshipers to come because the little girl was sick. The little girl that was sick is now dead. But watch the Bible in Mark chapter 5. Jesus walks into the house and says, why are y'all making all this noise? Remember, they had now called for the wailing women. They were, I work in death care. There were women in that time or there were people in that time that were hired to holler. They had called for the wailing women and the worshipers. They had called him, and Jesus walked in the house, and they were doing all this. And Jesus said, why are y'all making all this noise? And they said, the little girl is dead. And Jesus says, in my own version of the Bible, he says, y'all don't know who I am. He says, I am the resurrection. Y'all don't hear me. It was the same proclamation that he gave to the lady at the well. And because he was the resurrection, nothing could stay dead around him. They burst into laughter in front of Jesus' face, and Jesus did something that I think that we need to put back in order today. Jesus looked at everybody and put them all out. I like that. I like that because sometimes there are folk that are going to be in your central circle that they won't connect with you. And because they are so close to you, they can mess up your whole miracle. They can mess it up so much that you don't even understand that because they saying they for you, they really mourning you. This is a good time to do something that my co-pastor Susie used to say. It's a good time to do a pew check. You need to look down your row and ask your neighbor, do you still believe in miracles? You need to ask the neighbors on your row, do you still believe that God can open blinded eyes? Do you still really believe that he can heal cancer, that he can shrink tumors, that he can open doors that nobody else can open? Ask your neighbor, do you believe? And if they ask you, and if they answer you wrong, then you need to get up and move somewhere else in the sanctuary because your seat and who sits next to you is important. There is a purpose to my screaming. I want to teach this gospel is a gospel of excitement. I want to slow down. By the time we get to chapter 10, Jesus is on his way to Calvary. And I want to pause right here and say thank God for the cross I want to thank him for the cross. He's on his way to Calvary, and he's pressing his way to Calvary. And as he goes, he goes through Jericho. I like it because he's going there with his disciples, and a great crowd is following behind him. And Jesus is on his way there, and while he's on his way, there's a blind man sitting on the outskirts of the city. And when Bonimaeus hears that it's Jesus, he turns up his volume and starts screaming, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people around him shockingly tell Bartimaeus, hush man, you doing too much. You hollering a bit too much. You need to chill out. Isn't it amazing how people think you're overdoing it when you need God? I said, isn't it amazing how people think you dancing too much, that you are hollering too much, that you are screaming too much when you need God? When the truth of the matter is when you know and when you need God and you know that God is the only one that can fix it for you, I don't understand why they wouldn't help you holler the more. 
<laughs> Lord, I wish I had a piece of church here. But he cries just a little more louder. And Jesus stands still and calls the blind man to him. And then he asks him an ontological question. And that word means he asked him something that goes against logic. He asks the blind man, he says, what do you want me to do for you? And he says, I want to receive my sight. Jesus doesn't touch him. Jesus doesn't give him a prayer cloth. Jesus doesn't put oil on his forehead. And this is for all you prayer cloth buying, holy oil slapping saints. And all of that is nice and it has its purpose. And I believe in it. But when Jesus, the son of God, gets ready to heal you, when Jesus gets ready to deliver you, when Jesus gets ready to set you free, when Jesus gets ready to change your story, he don't need none of that. He don't need the help of your prayer cloth, the oil that was pressed. He don't need any other intervention. All he needs is to speak it. The Bible is true that because of the faith of Bartimaeus, he was made whole. Can I tell you why I'm preaching this again? I'm preaching this because there are people here today, you are here and you have a reason for your scream. When you need God in your family, you've got a reason for your screaming. When you need God in your body, you've got a reason for your screaming. When the enemy has attacked your marriage, you've got a reason for your screaming. When the enemy is trying to destroy destroy your mind you've got a reason for your screaming when you are fighting to keep your sanity you have a reason for your screaming if you've got fake friends and real enemies you've got a reason for your screaming if you are if you have seen your life crumble before your eyes you've got a reason for your screaming i wish i had about just 50 of y'all who've got a reason to scream. Look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and say, neighbor, I don't know what you came to church for today, but I came to scream. I've got a reason for my screaming. I got one. I got one. It may not be your reason. It may not be your mother's reason, but I got a reason to scream. I've got a reason to holler. I've got a reason to dance. And the Lord has given me liberty to do just that. I've got a reason for my screaming. If it worked for Bartimaeus, it ought to work for you. My God. We've got to have faith enough in God just to open up our mouths right where we are and scream to the Lord because we need him. Can I put a pin right there? Some of us don't know that we need God. I mean, we don't always understand that we need the Lord. I know you come home from work and you say, I just need something to mellow me out. You need the Lord. I know you say to your girlfriends and your, and your fellas, you know, I went back again, I slipped. No, you need the Lord. And we're not judging. I just need you to understand sometimes we have to get ourselves to a place where we understand that we need him. And take it further that he doesn't need us, but we need him. The moment that the church, that the people of God understand that we need the Lord and it is by our faith that will free us, then we will, able, then we will be able to scream from a free place. Ah, help me, Jesus. Can I go a little bit further? What does, let me ask you a question. What does your scream say to the sovereign Lord of heaven? Really, this is the whole this is the whole sermon, Ella Latrice. This is the whole sermon. Like, this is really it. It really is. Like, this, the whole point of it has already been taught. I could go to my seat or I could, one, come down here to this altar and have my own scream and altar call for my own self. I could do that. But, but since we got dressed and we came here, I'm going to go on and finish. I'm going to finish the rest of this because I'm pressing for time. What does your scream Say to the sovereign Lord of heaven, what does it say? It says, or it should say, I need God. 
I need him should be the answer. There's two groups of people here tonight. There's a group of people that believe you don't have any needs. Your money is great. Your health is good. Your marriage is fabulous. The people that work for you or you work with are doing a great job. Everybody, everything is good. You got a smile on your face all the time. If you don't have needs, then bless you. Because I promise you that there is going to come a day and there's going to come a time that your name can't get it, that your money won't be able to buy it, that your check won't be able to write it, and that your degrees won't matter. But then there is a second group of people. Help me. I said there's a second group of people, and that second group of people understands that they have a need of God, and they don't just need God, but they need God right now. Can I tell you that there is nothing like crying out to the God of heaven saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I need God right now. I don't need him yesterday. I don't need him later on today. I need him right now in my situation. Bartimaeus is not a proper noun. It's not, the name is not a proper noun. It's actually an adjective. Bar means son. Timaeus means man from nowhere. So technically, when you look at his name, he is the son of a man from nowhere. But here's the shout. It's not where you're from, but it's where God is taking you to. That's what's important. Bartimaeus had multiple issues, and one of his issues was that he had a biological problem. He could not see. He was blind. He could not see. Two, he has relations, relational problems. The folk around him are the people he has to depend on. Can I put a footnote right here? Can I put a footnote right here and tell y'all something? It's one thing to be sick, but there's another thing to be sick and broke. Listen carefully. Don't ever let both those things happen at the same time. Because the folk that you tried to help to keep their own lights on will forget about you when it's your turn. Are you listening? Because he has a biological problem and a relational problem, he has a social problem. Because he's stuck with people that have to bring him every time he needs to go where he needs to go. And because he has a social problem, he has a spiritual problem. He's saying, God, where are you when I need you? But let me tell you what I think about blind Bartimaeus. This is what I like about him. Though he is defined by his defect we don't though he is defined by what he has can I tell you what I really like about Bartimaeus here's what I really like about Bartimaeus Bartimaeus knows how to get a prayer through I said Bartimaeus knows how to get a prayer through give me a person that can pray through something any day any day let me put it here. Let me put a pin right here. I lost my phone a couple of weeks ago. I lost my phone, and you know if you lose your phone, it's like losing your life. I was looking everywhere for these things, and some of y'all was joking me like if you had an iPhone. God bless you, apostle. If you had an iPhone, then you'd be able to track your phone, and you'd have that, that app that says, find my phone. But if I ain't got the phone, then I don't know how that app is going to work. But anyway, anyway, I called the church. I called the church, Nika, and the lady who answered the phone, she was like, oh, my God, you lost your phone? She said, I'm, I'm going to pray and believe with you right now that we're going to find it today. Mother called me back an hour and a half later. I was on a pickup and said, I found your phone. Give me somebody who can pray any day. I don't care. Y'all ain't got happy for nothing. The Bible says, acknowledge me in all your ways. And if it's a lost phone or if, 
I lost my husband, or I'm looking for my Boaz. He said, acknowledge me in all your ways. Give me a person that can pray and get a prayer through any time of the week because I found my phone. Bonimaeus knew how to get a prayer through. He knew how to get a prayer through. Y'all helping me? So Bonimaeus was defined by his issue, but because he, he had this blindness, that did not stop him. He was not stopped or concerned by that. You know what Bonimaeus did? Bonimaeus hollered louder. I said Bonimaeus hollered louder, and his screams got the attention of God. His screams stopped Jesus in their track. Bonimaeus, Bonimaeus, now you wait a minute, devil. <laughs> Bonimaeus said, just because I can't see don't mean that my mouth don't work. He gets what he needs even though he cannot see. Even though he cannot hear. He can talk so he listens well and he hollers loudly. I wish I had about five of y'all that refuse to let what you don't have stop you from getting what you need from the Lord. <laughs> Tap your neighbor and say, I'm gonna, I won't let it pass me by. I may not have money, but I got to holler. I may not have good health, but I still know how to holler. I may not have a good job. I may not have the job that I want, but I know how to open up my mouth and cry loud to the Lord. I believe that every time again that we gather that there are people down your row who need God. And not only do they need God, but they need your screams. When the problems that you have and they have no human solution, you know you got to need God. You need him. When you are down to your last 20 in the month of October and there's still some month left to go, you need God to take that 20 and make it spin like it's 100. You know you need God when the devil is trying to pull you back into some old lifestyle or into old relationships. You know that you need God because he's already Already delivered you from that place. You know you need God in here when you take one pill for one thing, but that one pill messes up some other stuff in you, so you got to take a pill for that pill. You know you need God when you are sitting here knowing that God, if God doesn't pass you by, then your situation and your circumstances could possibly stay the same. He knew how to get the attention of God, and he got that attention by his faith. He could fix the problem. And we holler out and we scream to a God that has the power, the ability, the authority, and he has the audacity to fix it. Is there anybody here who needs God like right now? I need the Lord. Watch this. E.M. Bounds, that great writer of prayer, says, when you need God desperately, you should cry out the more loudly. I like that because when God is getting ready to heal some things, sometimes God is going to, or when he's getting ready to restore some things in you, he will position you and then tell you when to holler. <laughs> Hold on, this is still for the Bible listeners. This is still for the Bible listeners. If you don't believe that that's true, then you miss Sunday school class because Joshua, six, Joshua chapter 6, God is about to give a new territory to the children of Israel, but Moses is dead. Joshua now takes over and God says, Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I like it. He says, I want you to go to Jericho and I'm going to tell you when to scream. Don't just scream for no reason. Don't just scream to be screaming. Don't just scream because the organ is bumping. Don't just scream because the drums are kicking. God says, I'm going to give you a cue to scream. He says to them, march around the city every day once for six days. But watch this. Watch what he says. But he says, don't say a word. Can I drop something heavy on you right quick? Whenever God commands silence, it's what is called a hasal praise. 
Our ancestors did it all the time, and they may not have even known that they were doing it. But for you old school saints, when you used to play outside in the rain, if you did that and it started to thunder and then it started to lightning, they, their, our ancestors would turn off the lights. They'd bring us in the house and tell everybody to sit down. Sit on the couch, and then they would say, hush, because the Lord is doing his work. You, 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 you have to understand that God is an intentional God. So he told them to march around the wall for six days, but he told them to do it in silence. And then when they made it to the seventh day, God tells Israel, he tells Joshua, I want you to march seven laps. But on the seventh lap, on the seventh lap, when you get back around on that seventh time, he said, I want you to scream on purpose. I want you to shout so loud and I want you to blow the horns because there are things that the enemy thought that he could keep from you. But the Lord wants you to know that he's going to make that devil give it back to you. He's going to make the enemy give you everything back that he stole. Hold on. If God did it for Joshua and them back then, I feel like he's the same God that can make the devil give back stuff to you right now tonight. I, I know y'all not going to like that a whole lot, but I'm dumb enough to believe that if you holler at the right time, if you open your mouth and let the Lord know that you need him at the right time, then he'll show up like never before. I believe that he'll do it for you. Can I go further? I'm back at my home church in Salisbury for convocation, and there was a young lady standing on the side of the church. We were in convocation for like three days or so, and this lady that I knew, she was in the corner, and she was dancing every night, but this one particular night, she had really started like pouring out sweat and this usher came and was trying to fan her and she told the usher quit gone and because I'm nosy at the end of service I you know I went and asked her hey what's going on I hadn't seen you and she told me that she had gone through stage four cancer that she had had major surgery lost her marriage couldn't find three of her children she was going through. And you know what she said to me? She said, Mike, all I did, all I could do was lay in my bed and holler out, Lord, help me. She said, that's all I could, the, through the pain, all I could say was, Lord, help me. And so what I need you to understand is that, let me just throw, let me, let me, let me put this in the pot, too. Let me put this in there. I love people that shout, but I love people who shout with a controlled substance. They, they know what they're doing. They're not wild and all over the place. They know exactly what they're doing, and that's what, that, that's what drew me to her. You know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly what you are. So when pain or something else hits, you're not taken out of self. She knew exactly who to call on in her time of need. She said, all I could do was call out, Lord, help me. Can I tell you something? The promises of God are true. They are amen. They are just. You can stand on them just like Bartimaeus stood on the word of the Lord. Can I give you some more? Can I ask you another question? Number two, we've already, I've already asked you this. What does your mean, what does your scream say to heaven? It should say, number one, I need God. If you need God tonight, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I, need God. I need God. I've come through some stuff that you can't help me with. I need God. I've, some, I've come through some stuff that you may not understand. I need God. I've come through some stuff that I may not even be able to tell my prayer partner about. I need God. God. I need God. There's some stuff that I can't divulge to my parents. I can't divulge to my best friend, my secret girlfriend, my BFF. I can't say it to my homeboys or the fellas. I can't go, Bishop, to the College of Bishops and share it with them. Only the Lord can help me through here. Number two, I can't hold, I can't hold y'all too much longer because I'm at 510, but watch the text. Watch the text. We're going to scream in just a little bit. 
Your scream says to heaven, I need God. Secondly, it also says, I am desperate. Yes. Say to a neighbor, I am desperate. I want to slow down, but I can't slow down, but I want to make sure that I give this to you guys right. Let me see the hands of those of you who really, and I mean really without a question, you are really in a position where you need the Lord like right now. Okay, okay, good. I have a word of caution for you. Be careful who you sitting by. We said this earlier, right? Because even though they rolled with you, that doesn't mean that they can worship with you. It doesn't mean that you can worship with them. Why would you say that, E.P.? Because the people around Bartimaeus were part of his problem and not part of his solution. Instead of helping him to scream out to the Lord, they told Bartimaeus, you overdoing it. Can I put something right here? If you know that you are doing it right if you know that you are doing it right around other people and they think that you are overdoing it and they are not helping you to do it and they are telling you that you are doing too much and you know that there is nothing wrong with what you are doing at all you know then that you are doing it right that's when you know that you're on the right track. You ought to be doing it so much so that they think that you're losing your mind. They ought to say, God Almighty, what is going on? Why are they acting like that? It's because I need God. Why are they running like that? Why won't she sit down? It's because I need God. Why he won't stop dancing or hollering? It's because I need God. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. Bartimaeus cries. He is crying now. The Bible says he cries loud. He cries loudly. Watch the text. And he cries with a loud voice, which suggests to us that both the thesis and the antithesis are both true. He does not cry softly because he knows that he can cry loudly, which lets us know that if you can holler, you should holler. God Almighty. I'm so sick and tired of people being around people that say, I don't want to be too loud and I don't want them to think that I don't have any home training and, and I don't want them to think that I'm out of order. Can I just go ahead and say that when you were in sin, did it take all that? When you were on your back, did it take all that? When the doctors didn't know how to fix it, did it take all that? If it took all of that, then what more does it take for us to get God's attention? Bartimaeus cried loudly, and his cry was coupled with the combat with the folks all around them. And I call it a comeback because that's what it is. Let me show it to you. He's crying with all of his heart, but they're saying, hush, he's here and what's deep. And don't miss this. Bartimaeus had one job. He had one description. Bartimaeus cried every day. He cried out every day. I'm going to go slow. I talk real fast, but I'm going to try and go slow right through here just real quick. Bartimaeus had one job. Bartimaeus cried out loud every day. He was homeless, so to speak. You, you know what that looked like. If you work in D.C., if you work anywhere close to Florida Avenue, if, if you got to go anywhere around Addison Road Subway Station, if, if you got to go anywhere down DuPont Circle, you have seen a Bartimaeus. You know what it sounds like. Hey! Hey! Let, let me hold a dollar. Hey, 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 bruh. Hey, bruh. Hey, bruh. Oh, you just gonna ignore me? All right, all right. Hey, 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 can I get that? Can I get that? If, if, you, if you've ever seen a Bartimaeus, let me see your hands. I, I at one time, was a Bartimaeus. Have you ever? I found myself one time at the subway station. It, it is a most humiliating, almost humiliating situation to have to, let me say it nicely, ask arms of people. 
I had to stand at the subway one time. I don't know how I left my wallet at home, but I was late and I could not turn around and go back home, Elder Carlene. So I had to stand at the subway and say, I'm sorry, excuse me, can I have a dollar? I'm sorry, excuse me, do you have a dollar to spare? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get, I mean, I was dressed in a whole suit. I'm sorry, please excuse me, but do you have a dollar? I have been Bartimaeus. And I'm going to hasten on, and I don't know, I'm going to close this. I don't know how many people, but I'm sure that there were crowds because the Bible says that whenever Jesus was there, crowds followed him. I don't know how many people, even when we're here amongst ourselves and our whispers get so elevated when we think we're talking loudly that we somehow begin to start talking like this. And you're like, what's going on, man? It's so good to see you. I'm so glad that you were here today on Sunday. And then all of a sudden, everybody is screaming. And you're really not trying to scream. You're just really trying to be heard. And even though that you're trying to be heard, you're really screaming and you're really just having a regular conversation with the person next to you, but because everybody else is talking and everybody else, the whole crowd is trying to listen to one another, now we're all talking at an uh, elevated voice level and nobody can hear anything. And there was a crowd of people around Bartimaeus who was on the side of the road, who was blind. He couldn't tell how many people were out there with them. I'm trying to close here because I want to hasten them because of our time. He didn't know how many people were out there but everybody was talking and I'm sure because Jesus was the hot man in town everybody knew and all the girls were like oh that's Jesus from Nazareth oh that's what he looked like from real I heard my auntie talking about him oh he really do got hair like wool oh that's what he is that's who he is that's the son that's who they say is the son of God everybody was talking but Bartimaeus had to scream loudly over them to get Jesus's attention Bartimaeus had to get to a place where he was talking over everything Everybody else talking, standing on the side of the road saying, Everybody else was saying, hey, sir, how you doing? Bartimaeus was, hey, I need you, Jesus. The desperate is right here, Jesus. He to get over the crowd. And when his voice got over the crowd, the Bible says that Jesus stood still. He got Jesus' attention, Will, and he stood still. Have you ever been in a place of chaos all around you? And you, ha I can't finish this. And had, I feel like Pastor Trina now, I need a part two. And had no choice but to holler. You felt like nobody could see me. And I don't even know how Bartimaeus there. I don't know how he heard Jesus was passing by. But Bartimaeus, excuse me, sis, was amongst the people. Bartimaeus wasn't sitting by himself. Bartimaeus was sitting on the curb. And Bartimaeus was around everybody who was talking, who was talking to Jesus. You hear me? I said, he, they were all talking to Jesus at the same time. They were all saying, can you please help me? Hey, sir, how you doing? I just, do you got a prophetic word for me? Can, can you tell me if I'll ever find Mr. Wright? Can you tell me if she really loved me? Can you, can you tell me where you going? Can you tell me where you got this garment from? Is that, is that linen or is that cotton? Can you tell me anything about who I am? Bartimaeus was sitting on the side of the road. Bartimaeus was out there hollering, You haven't been desperate enough to just holler. Jesus, uh, help me, Jesus. Uh, come see about me, Jesus. Uh, I know y'all ready for me to quit, but this was Bartimaeus was doing. Jesus. Uh, Bartimaeus had to have got tired at some point. His voice might have been like my voice after you talked for a little while. It started to get weak, but Bartimaeus would never stop. Bartimaeus kept saying, Jesus, hey, hey, Jesus. 
He ain't know Jesus from nowhere. I don't even know how he understood the reputation of him, but he just kept on hollering. Jesus. Some of y'all ought to just try it sometimes. Get yourself behind, back, back on a wall where your back is against the wall and you don't got nowhere else to go. And it seems like the walls are, are caving in on you and everybody else is above you. And all you can do is say, Jesus, I, I don't even know if Bartimaeus really at that moment had the activities of his limbs. And just like all of y'all are standing, the Bible says that, all, that Bartimaeus was sitting. He was sitting by the roadside. So I'm not even sure if he even got up, but he was calling Jesus. He was hollering, Jesus, O thou son of David. Jesus, would you please come and help me, Jesus? And in the midst of his crying, good God, help me here. In the midst of all the people, of everybody who was around, Jesus stood still. God Almighty, I said, Jesus stood still. He cried so until it got his attention. He cried so until it made him turn around. Just like the woman with the issue, there were people all around me. But Jesus said, who touched me? They did, he did not touch Jesus physically like the woman with the issue. But my voice touches him. My prayer touches him. Glory to God. My beckoning touches him. My call out to him touches him. And when Jesus heard Bartimaeus calling for him, he stood still. And then he didn't just stand still, but he sent out a commandment. He said, bring him to me. I come to encourage somebody that feels like you've been overlooked, like nobody is ever going to see you. You sitting in church and your spiritual hand is waving. Please don't pass me by. Please don't pass me by. Please come and see me. I'm sitting right here. I just need a touch. I don't even want much. I just need a touch from you. And you know what Jesus asked Bartimaeus? He asked Bartimaeus, what do you have of me? What do you want from me? Bartimaeus could have said, I, I want riches and houses. Bartimaeus could have said, I want a companion. But Bartimaeus AP said, I just want to see. Oh, to behold him and look upon his face. <laughs> just to see him. I don't, he, Bartimaeus wasn't looking for the crowd. He wasn't concerned about who brought him there that day. He wanted to see Jesus. He said, I just want to see you, sir. I want to see you. I'm screaming and I'm crying out. I want to see you. He said, what do you want from me, Bartimaeus? He said, I just want to see you. And the scripture says immediately. Will, I want to dance again. He said immediately. Jesus told Bartimaeus, your faith. You've got to have enough faith in God. Then it doesn't matter what you can or cannot see. I can't tell you, Deacon Percy, how long Bartimaeus was out there on the roadside. I, I, I cannot, I cannot say for sure how many days he went out there. Not just days, just how many years. Here's a problem with the church bishop. We got folks who just want it immediately. We've got these, we've, we've got some of these microwave saints. I want it instantly. Even though it happened immediately, the scripture never says how long, how many days, how often, how much time Bartimaeus sit, spent out there on the roadside. And while everybody else was passing him by, because it was okay when he was hollering for them. It was okay when he was cheering them on. It was okay when he was paying them attention. It was okay when he was asking of them. But the moment that he started beckoning and asking and calling for God, then there became a problem. That's when there was a problem, sister. It was when he turned his attention from 
from them and focus his attention on the Lord that there was a problem. But honey, I wish to God that you would turn your back on some folk and turn your attention to God and just start screaming, Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus, thou son of David. And I promise you, If you turn and call him, he will stand still and answer you. Come on, stand on your feet. I've got to go. We're out of time. I'm not really out of word. We're out of time. You're standing in this building. You're in this sanctuary. And you really need God. You don't just need God, but you've been actually praying, asking God to increase your faith. I want more faith. I want to believe. I want to believe God. But my faith needs to be increased. It seems like every time I turn around, it's people against me. They don't mean me no good. It seems like every time I turn around, there's something else bucking up against me that I cannot get over. It seems like every time I take one step, somebody's dragging me back and saying, be quiet. You don't take all that. And I get out of that conversation and I come a little bit further and somebody else says, you're just doing too much. You just need to chill out a little bit. And so I try to maneuver around them and I keep pressing my way. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, I'm just pressing past people and I'm trying to move past people and I just want to really get to him. And if I got to crawl to get to him, I'll do whatever it takes so that I can get to the Lord so I can touch him. I just want to touch him. You just want to touch him. This altar is open for you. This altar is open for you. You just want to touch him. You just want your faith to be increased. Come meet me at this altar. Come on, come meet me at this altar. And when you come down here, you're not really looking for EP. You're looking to touch Jesus. I want to touch him. I'm not asking about where you are, if you got a title behind your name, or if you got a title in front of your name, or if you got letters after it. I want God. I need to touch God. There are situations that I'm in. There's a season that I'm going through where I need the hand of the Lord. I need to touch Jesus. I am calling after him, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. set of issues and trials and struggles and so father right now i lift them to you oh god father we lift every burden and every circumstance every need to you and so father we come to you today in expectation knowing that you are a god that can do it knowing that you are a god that can change things and so father we pray to you today asking you to be god in their situations father get into every circumstance Father, get into every need. 
begin to shift things right now oh god god we believe that things are getting ready to change in the atmosphere god we believe right now that our faith is getting ready to move things for us that our faith is getting ready to shift things for us Father, many of us have been dealing with things for months after months, for days after days. Seems like every time we turn around, that same situation is there. But Father, today is the breaking point. Today is the day that we are set free. Today is the day that it is dwell in our souls, oh God. God, we've come today with faith, believing that it is well, believing that it is so. We will not live another day like we lived before. We're tired of the things that's had us bound. Tired of the things that's had us by the coattail. Tired of the things that's had us wrapped around. And so today, God, we decree and declare freedom. We decree and declare that we need you. Father, hear our scream today. Hear our cry today, oh God. God, we're crying for a reason. The reason is that we need you now. God, we don't need you tomorrow. We don't need you next week. God, we need you now. The enemy has been fighting us on every hand. And so, Father, we've reached the place that we need you. And so, Father, I release right now. Release your warring angels uh, to go and fight on behalf uh, of those who are kneeled at your altar. Father, you've made room for them, oh God. Uh, You've made things work for them, oh God. Uh, I see it in the atmosphere that finances are being loose. Uh, Healing is being loose, oh God. God, I believe right now, oh God, that hearts are being put back together. Relationships are being put back together. God, depression has to go. God, everything that's been tormenting your people, we break it right now in the spirit. Uh, We break the chains of slavery. We break the chains that's had them bound. Uh, We decree and declare freedom. Uh, We pour out the oil of God. Uh, We pour out the oil of God. Uh, God, we create right now uh, an atmosphere right now, oh God, uh, where lives have to be changed. Uh, We create right now, oh God, uh, an atmosphere right now uh, where they will not leave uh, like they came, oh God. We create an atmosphere, oh God, uh, where anything is possible. Whatever it is, is possible. So we release possibility right now. Possibility right now. We get rid of uh, all the torment, uh, all the crying, uh, all the weeping. Uh, We scream for Jesus right now. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, come and help me. Uh, Jesus, come get me. Jesus come rescue me Jesus come free me Jesus come loose me Jesus come get me people have tried to help me but I need Jesus Jesus we need you Jesus we need you Jesus pour out your spirit pour out your spirit on us pour out your spirit on us oh God God we need your spirit we can't live mentally without you oh God we can't live physically without you oh God we can't live without you oh God so God come right now rescue us oh God rescue us oh God rescue us oh God people have walked out on us oh God and we don't know how to deal with it so rescue us oh God people have made us promises oh God and we don't know how to deal with it so rescue us oh God God, we've trusted man. We've trusted jobs. We've trusted doctors. And they've all let us down. So God, we trust in you oh, tonight, oh God. We put our faith in you, oh God. We're tired of trying to do things on our own, oh God. So we want to do it in you, oh God. Not by our might. Not by our strength. But by your spirit, uh, we want to do it, oh God. Give us your spirit uh, to be able to make it through. Uh, Give us your spirit, Rabashi. 
to be able to get through. Give us your spirit where we can't move, oh God. Walk with us, spirit. Talk with us, spirit. I'm tired of talking to myself. I'm tired of being in my own head. I want to hear from the spirit of God. I can't move without the spirit. I can't make decisions without the spirit. Let your spirit follow me. Let your spirit have its way in my life, oh God. Oh God, this is a cry for you, oh God. We scream for you, oh God. We scream wanting your presence, oh God. God, we didn't come for another Sunday evening experience. God, we come from a life-changing experience. Uh, we're tired of things being the way that they are, oh God. And God, what we need is for you to have your way in our lives, oh God. God, we've come out of desperation. We don't know what else to do, oh God. God, if we're honest, you're our only hope, oh God. You should have been our first hope. We've tried everything that we can, and we've come to a place where you're our only hope. Uh, and if we don't do going to be done so we believe oh God right now by faith uh, things will be made by faith uh, ways will be made by faith uh, all of the things uh, that we bring to this offer it is done uh, so now God we speak uh, in victory now God we pray uh, in victory now God we testify in victory uh, because we don't believe uh, that this is just something that we're doing uh, we don't believe uh, that this is just another altar call uh, but God we believe uh, that things are really going to change uh, we believe uh, that my heart is really going to heal uh, we believe uh, that depression has got to leave uh, we believe uh, that mama's got to start acting right uh, we believe uh, that our children are going to be saved uh, we believe uh, that God is reestablishing things. So we believe and we say with confidence that it is well. It is well. We decree it is well. 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 It is well in my home. It is well in my soul. It is well in my spirit. It is well in my mind. Mind. It is well in my body. It is well. 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 Those of you in the audience begin to declare it is well. It is well. Yeah. It is well. God, we believe that it is well not because of what we saw not because of what we heard but we believe that it is well because our faith is telling us it's well our faith is moving us to it's well we've dwelt on it long enough we've cried long enough we've slept on it long enough and so today it is well it is well well, I'm not going to walk another day in bondage. It is well. I'm not going to walk another day wrapped in the chains that the enemy put around me. It is well. It is well in here. Yeah, it is well. It is well. Because the blood, the blood purchased my freedom. The blood has purchased my freedom. I don't have to live like this uh, because the blood purchased my freedom. Uh, so I thank you, God. Uh, my request uh, is now moving to thanksgiving. Uh, and I begin to thank God uh, because he's already done it. Uh, he's already doing it. Uh, he's already moving. Uh, he's already breaking ways. Uh, so I thank you, God. Uh, my cry is now I thank you, God, uh, for what you're getting ready to do. Uh, my house.
house won't be the same. So I thank you, God. My relationships won't be the same. So I thank you, God. My diagnosis won't be the same. So I thank you, God. My mental health will be different. So I thank you, God. The people around me will be different. So I thank you, God. I thank you for the ways that you've made. It is well. It is well. So, Father, in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus, we declare, oh God, that anytime the enemy rears his ugly head to try to make them think that they were not delivered, freed, or taken into a new place today, we bind him on every hand. We put our foot on the devil and we let him know that he can't talk to them. We take authority with the blood of Jesus that the enemy can't have these. They made a decision today and by faith we declare that it is well, it is well, it is well. And so Father, I pray. Father, I pray for those who are in the chairs. There may be an issue that didn't come here to the altar. But because you're a God that can do more than one thing at a time. Father, whatever it is that they may be going through, whatever it is that they may be petitioning you for, Father, do it for them. Father, do it for them, oh God. And even now as I pray, oh God, allow me to be selfish for just a moment. My mother is going into surgery on Wednesday. And so I pray right now, God, that you guide the hands of the surgeon. God, I pray right now that he doesn't have an alcoholic beverage before he comes in. I pray right now that he doesn't get into a fight or get disgusted on his way into the hospital. Father, I pray right now that you give him an anointing from an old high from the nurses to the people that check them in that my mother will go in have the procedure and come out like everything is expected and to father not just my mother but there's some other people who are awaiting procedures those who may be watching me online we decree and declare that they're going to go through it but they're going to come out and they're going to come out better than what they've been and so, Father, we lift up the medical field. Don't let a bad diagnosis happen to anybody under the sound of my voice. We come against malpractice. We come against accidents. We come against anything that may destroy the people that are listening to me right now. And so, Father, we do it believing, knowing that it is well. Father, I pray before we leave this place for our pastors. Father, they've on assignment today. And so, Father, we pray for them that you bring them back at the appointed time. Father, we're thankful for the shepherds that you've given us. We're thankful, God, because they're pouring into us. And so, Father, I pray right now that you pour back into them so that they can continue to pour into us. Thank you for the word today, God. Thank you for all that you're doing in this season. Father, I'm grateful. We're grateful because we know that you care about NYDC. Thank you for speaking to us, oh God. Thank you for inclining your ear to us, oh God. God, thank you for just not being cavalier when it comes to the affairs of our life. God, you know everything. God, you sent prophetic words that has been on point, that has been accurate. And we believe that that's because you care and you love about us, God. So thank you, oh God, for speaking to your, these, your people. And so, Father, right now, I'm getting ready to do the benediction. Father, as we leave this place, oh God, we never want to leave your presence. And Father, I pray right now, those who have came with issues and problems, God, we just believe that it won't be so when they leave here. We know that in times past, as soon as they walk out the door, the enemy is standing right there. But not today, Satan. You've got to go back to the pits of hell by the authority of the blood of Jesus. You can no longer have rule in our lives because we believe that this will be the start of the rest of our lives where God will free, God has freed us 
from things that have bound us for years. God has freed us from people, from circumstances, situations, and systems. And so from here on out, we will walk and declare the freedom that God has freed us from. And so, Father, every step that we take, your word says that the ten lepers came to Jesus. And as they went, they were healed. And so, Father, every step that we take outside of this door, I believe that you're healing, you're repairing, and you're restoring situations. And we thank you for that. So, Father, we love you. We bless you. And as we leave this place, we just want you to know we're grateful for all that you're doing. And, Father, we declare that this week be a week of victory and not defeat. Father, if someone's looking for a job, bring their resume to the top. Give them favor. Favor in the eyes of the interviewer, oh God. Father, we're thankful for these things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.